Hey guys, it's me, Bad Grisham. Today I'm going to show you a gaming PC build for around $600. This is going to be the best possible build for $600, and I'll let you play every game you throw at it, at very high settings, even resource-heavy games like Battlefield 4, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and the upcoming game Thief. Older games and less resource-heavy games like Skyrim, South Park The Stick of Truth, and the extremely popular DayZ should be able to run maxed out with this system. This is an excellent PC to have for the next few years, but it's also good to remember this PC is upgradable, so you can always add on to this system when you feel you want more out of it. That being said, let's get started with the build. For processor, I chose the AMD FX 6300. This is a 6-core processor clocked at 3.5 GHz and is actually very easy to overclock. Because it's a hexa-core processor, it's recommended for newer games like Battlefield 4 that take use of the 6-core design. More games in the future will be moving up to 6 cores, so this is an excellent processor to get started with. The 6 cores are also useful if you plan on doing any video editing, as the extra cores can really boost performance in that area. The FX 6300 will run you about $110. For a motherboard, I chose the Gigabyte GA970A UD3P. This motherboard is a good fit for this build as it supports overclocking with the processor. It also has two USB 3 ports, eight USB 2 ports, four memory slots, and it's just a very solid motherboard with all the extras you'll need for about $100. For the graphics card, I chose the 2GB MSI Radeon R9 270X. After the graphics card mining fiasco, the prices of these cards are finally going back down again. And because of that, this is a great card to have for this build. Due to it being an R9, this card now supports Mantle, which will bump up your quality and speed of Mantle-supported games like Battlefield 4. Speaking of Battlefield 4, as an added bonus, you also get a copy of the game for free. This single graphics card can also run any game you throw at it at very high settings, and it should last quite some time before an upgrade is needed. The 2GB MSI Radeon R9 270X run you about $240. Memory isn't that hard of a component to go with, so I went two 4GB sticks of G-Skill Rip Jaws X-Series DDR3 RAM. It's rated at 1600MHz, which is plenty for your games and some multitasking. But unfortunately, the price of RAM is going back up again, which is never a good thing, so you have to spend around $80 for 8GB. Hard drives are very simple components to pick, as they constantly stay the same. Now once again, I'm going with the 1TB Western Digital Caviar Blue. The Caviar Blue is a very reliable hard drive, and a terabyte is plenty of space for your games, movies, music, pictures. It's just a great fit for anything you need to store. Now there is a small difference between the Caviar Blue and the Caviar Black, and the Caviar Black costs around $20 more. Unless you do get a good deal, or you just want a small bump in speed, you can go with the Black, but if not, you'll be fine with the Blue. The Caviar Blue comes in at around $60. Up next is the power supply, which is the most important part of any build, mainly because you need power to run your system. Once again, always remember to never be cheap with a power supply, because it runs everything. You definitely don't want your PC to catch on fire, so make sure you pick a good quality supply over a great sale price. My recommendation is the Corsair Builder 500 watt power supply. 500 watts is plenty for the system, and it can also be used if you plan on upgrading your build. It's also 80 plus bronze certified, which means it's a high quality power supply, and it can actually help you lower your power bill. You can get this for around $50. As usual, the optical drive on a PC is really not needed unless you want a Blu-ray drive, and mostly unless you use CDs, the only thing you'll ever use it for is to install the OS. I just went with a cheap yet reliable reader and burner, which is a light-on. It's a simple and basic drive and it'll only run you about $17. You can always upgrade to a Blu-ray drive if you want to put in the extra $40, so I'll leave a link in the description if you do want to go that route. Finally is the case. Now once again, this is where your own personal opinion or your general cheapness comes in. Cases can be all the way up to the hundreds, so to keep this build moderately cheaper, but still have a good number of extras, I went with the Roswell Challenger. This is a great quality case that has a simple style, and it holds everything together really well. It even comes with three fans, which will keep your PC cool, but it won't have any problems with noise. Once again, it's your build, so do whatever you want in terms of a case, but if you just want a cheap, reliable one, you can get this for $50. Well, that's about it, guys. This is my guide for a quality $600 PC that should last quite some time before it ever gets outdated. Now, the prices of any components can change often, so I'll be leaving a link in the description to PCPartPicker.com. It's a website where you can plan out your PC build online, and you can also see the lowest prices for the components that you need. That's all for this video, guys, so if you like this video and you want to see some more of them, click on the like button. I'll have three other builds available for this month, one for a $400, $800, and $1,000 PC. Click on the links in the video when they're available if you want to see one of them. If you enjoy my videos, you can click here to subscribe to my channel. It really does help me out, and it shows me you want to see some more of my builds. I hope to see you guys in my next video.